Uh, it's actually, sometimes when people ask me, why got out this idea to write a book? So where does this idea come from? And it's actually, it was in end of 2016. I was doing the marketing analysis for one of the local ship Hong Kong, no? and I tried to explain uh, where is the dry cog marketing and the container marketing, the position of the, in the market. And suddenly I found uh, it was the best time to buy dry and the container ship. It was in December 2016. So I had a chat with, uh, with a guy. Uh, I said uh, it's a really good time. And I found uh, some data interlinked can help me to judge the market movement because, you know, yeah. after analysis. And I back to uh, our office, I try to explain a few colleagues, including, you know, uh, you know colleagues in, in, in Sydney. Um, one of the colleagues said, JJ, it's too complicated. You need a book to explain. <laughs> it's a joking. And I was starting searching the market and whether any similar book existing. And actually, there's no similar book existing to help people to predict uh, the future market movement. So when I sit back, why not? And then, you know, starting to prepare to write the book. Because the book itself, uh, you need lots of data. As a banker, we don't have the data. So what I can do? So I started talking to all the big book houses uh, in the world. And finally, I got two largest, uh, uh, one is uh, Clarkson, the largest ship broker, and a Baltic exchange is the eldest uh, shipping exchange uh, got permission to let me use the data. Uh, actually, I visited the London, of the London office, had a meeting with the managing director of Clarkson Research, and also had a meeting with the uh, Baltic Exchange marketing director. So, and I really appreciated that help or uh, permission for me to fulfill this uh, book. Um, I continue as uh, writing, you know, I never thought about the future of this book. I like profit, uh, cost. Uh, it's actually until there's one ship called Steady Desi. Um, it was a very large oil carrier, 260,000 dead weight. She carried a fully loaded cargo from Brazil towards China. And uh, it, it is in the Uruguay. El between Brazil and Argentina. It's about 1,300 miles away from the shore. She sank. Tech with her, 22 crews. And the two crews survived. And one week later, I was uh, attending one of the large conferences in Hong Kong, where I gathered 500 people from the shipping industry. I spent one day there. Nobody mentioned this disaster. And I looked back, hey, these are people work in the shipping industry, make this uh, industry alive. Actually, something wrong, you know. There's some, we need morally to bring the people to take care of the crew. So I decided to contribute um, all the profit of um, this book towards uh, a society, take care of crew. But one thing I can share with you yesterday, I was delivering one speech to United States Merchant Marine them, uh, ac academy. And now after our speech, eh, there's one exchange student from Korea, and he came to me and said, Mr. Wang, one of my best friends lost his life on the ship. And it was really shock for me yesterday. So uh, the family is still looking for the explanation why. So I think this is the background of why you know, that book is towards Seller Society. And I, I had a meeting with the ambassador in Hong Kong, had a meeting with the representative in Singapore, and also paid a visit to the office in Southampton. And finally, they agreed to use the logo in the back of this book, uh, because in this year, they're also celebrating the 200 years anniversary. So it makes more meaning because they have been consistently taking the seafarer for the last 200 years. Uh, my life in shipping, uh, uh, I'm a village boy from China. Uh, you know, I left the village at 19 years old. 
I never thought I'm going to abroad. So later on, I came to the city of Shanghai, working in the shipyard there, and later working for like Lloyd's Register, and then later moved to Korea, and later lived in London for 11 years, working for classification, uh, Royal Bank of Scotland, uh, E.A. Gibson's, uh, and later back to CBA, now back to Hong Kong. So personally, I believe my life has been blessed, you know. So in the last 10 years, uh, my main job, uh, because since uh, Royal Bank of Scotland, uh, um, E.A. Gibson's, uh, and also my CUNY rule, is actually so how to looking for marketing movement. Because it, it's so difficult, uh, it's a future. Except the God, uh, nobody can see the future. There's no crystal ball in the world. So after so many years, I found that the, coming to the basin, it's actually some supply and demand. Because everyone in shipping industry, we are working on the shipping side. The shipping is a, try to, is a supply to the dry cargo of normal cargo demand for seaborne transportation. So how they connected the, the, ch the cargo owner pay the chart to the shipping and the, and the shipping transport the cargo for the cargo owner. So every time when this demand starting going up, fleet if green slow than the demand, the chart rate start moving up. When this fleet green faster and the demand green slow, and we find the chart rate start going down. So the chart rate is a cash flow to flow inside of the shipping industry to keep everyone working in the shipping industry alive. And then, you know, I introduced the five new terminology in this book. One is called NDG. NDG is standing for net demand growth. So we're back to this demand growth and fleet growth. What I have done, I'm using demand growth, take off the fleet growth, become net growth. And I found that this net growth is a key driving for the charter market. Second thing is the TF ratio. T standing for trading volume of the cargo, F standing for fleet size. So when this, uh, because the volume of the cargo increased, uh, and you will probably got a high tier ratio. When you have a high tier ratio, you more or less, you will got the high chart rate. You will ask me why NDG and TF both in fact impact the chart rate. What I have found, uh, NTG is mainly influence the uh, movement direction. TF ratio is mainly to influence the volume of the movement. And the third terminology which I introduced uh, for this book is called CF ratio. C standing for new contractor, F, F standing for fleet size. Every time when the chart rate is going up, you will find owners starting all the books and the new contractor will start increasing, so CF ratio is starting going up. The fourth terminology which I introduced called DF ratio, D standing for delivery. So every time, I mean so most of ship will take about a two to four years delivery. If you got the high new contractor now, and you will definitely will have a high delivery in two to four years time. So basically, if you've got a high CF ratio now, in four, maybe three years time, you will have a high DF ratio. And the last new terminology which I introduced is SF ratio. S standing for scrap, remove the ship from the tonnage. It is very interesting because every time when chart rate is going up, on a stop uh, scrap. When every time one chart rate going down, and the scrap increases significantly. And because, uh, which I also found, uh, scrap, uh, it's the uh, most efficient way to balance the supply. Because the fleet, let's say, you got a new building coming, and on the end, uh, got the fleet removed. Because the new building takes two to four years to join the fleet, however, the remove the fleet will reduce the fleet supply side very quickly. Um, I also heavily discussed the asset value of the um, how to link it with the chart rate. 
the chartered going up as the value going up. This uh, book heavily used the three years averaging because I found a three years averaging is more or less like an average time from the people sign the contract until the delivery. And once this uh, delivery joined the fleet, uh, actually the fleet is permanently changed. So I found it's quite reasonable and I found it's quite efficient. Um, and also in the last uh, second of this book, uh, I heavily explained them um, every time when the marketing started going up, the current value always moving above the average. And until the, air, one, until the current value crossed the average, and averages start changing the direction. And when marketing going down, the current value tending always moving under the average until touch the bottom, um, the current value touch the average and it changes the direction again. This uh, book um, mainly based the three main high liquid asset. Uh, one is dry cargo, one is the uh, oil tanker, and one is the container uh, ships, you know. So this is uh, about this book. Um, I got some feedbacks from the market already. So I think one of the CEO writing from the Greece, writing some good words about this book, um, because uh, it's a book to help people understand and predict the future of the market. Um, and also one, one of the managed director to it's additional for current marine education. It is why I was in uh, Merchant Marine Academy yesterday to give them a little bit update of this book. Um, uh, and you know, one of the media from Singapore also gives some good words because this book's proceeds towards the Seda Society. So this is all part of this book. Of course, you can buy this book from Amazon, from like uh, two websites in Hong Kong. And uh, you can buy it from China WeChat, and um, you know you can buy from the bookshops in Hong Kong as well. Um, this is the Sailor Society, uh, the logos.